Okay, you can sweat these um, these rings onto the uh, onto the drive shafts. It's really not difficult. I'm, I can film it, I suppose. But that one goes on dead easily. That one, heat it up, push it as far as you possibly can down, and then bash it against the flat edge of the vise. Let me put you on the tripod, and you can you can watch me do this. Clicky, click, click, click. Right, so we're working here and here. Great. So, let's heat up first and foremost. Starts to go ballistic, doesn't need to be white hot. Get it a little bit warmer, turn it off, right up to here, and like that. That's how you do it. Dead easy. Beautiful. That is absolutely spot on. Right, next I need to rebuild the universal joint, then this can go in. So that's the new bearing, that's warm still, new bearing has gone into the swivel housing and that's the seat for it there. Okay, new parts. Uh, decided really not to use these ones. I just think, do you know what? These are a couple of quid, for heaven's sake. Anyway, I'm going to put this UJ together now and put the radio back on. Right, some basic bolting together. I've not videoed a lot of it because it's just basic bolting together. My only cock up here. Um, and can you see what it is yet? Um, right, when I dismantled this, I dismantled it from the swivel and pulled everything off. Um, when I put it all back in again, the swivel housing was in place and the drive shaft <laughs> was just a bit too close to that wheel. Um, I managed to get it in with a little bit of wiggling and wobbling. Uh, but yes, the drive, when you take it apart, just be aware of how you took it apart and how you think it's gonna go back together again would be my suggestion there um, so shoes are on hubs on i could need to do the lock nuts and so forth on the hub um, but i think now for now for now i'm going to lob the drums on there and uh yes get ready to bleed these brakes through once i've done the back axle yes uh, i'm not going to bother doing the front inner wings yet there's a couple of reasons for that first and foremost i have got a better front wing for the driver's side because that might just be not really doing it justice it's got quite a few dents on it uh, and the other one is absolutely full of dents there and filler up here this is all filler so i'm going to talk to dad and you can see all the filler in there i'm going to talk to dad about just just let's just put another pair of wings on it dad to hell with it um the outer wings or the the parts that aren't dented um are over here wander around to the back of my workshop here they are hello a uh, little bit of corrosion down the edges there but nothing particularly serious i'm not too worried about getting these painted up um i will uh fit decent closing panels and i'll probably straighten out these edges here i'm not really worried about getting them looking absolutely immaculate. It's a Land Rover for crying out loud. Um, the other reason that I haven't put the inner wings on yet is because um, I seem to recall the clutch on this thing stinking like a good one. Um, and I did say to Dad, do you remember the clutch was going on there? He said, yes. Now, did you do anything about it, Dad? No. Right, so this might be the obvious point, actually, just to lift the engine out, change the clutch, put it back in again. Um, it just extends the amount of time. I know, I know, I know, I know. But at this point, it would make sense to actually just get... And there's also a significant oil leak. I can't show you because there's no light down there. There's a significant oil leak around the bell housing, which is most likely to be the rear rope seal around the crank. Um, and I'll show you how I do that when I get down to it. But in the meantime, front axle's almost done. Yes, and so is this one. Spoiler, bloody axles. 
It's looking a bit better, isn't it? Less oily. Less rusty. Now, you will notice that that is no longer a 10-inch drum brake. No, 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 no. So, incredibly generous donation from James. Thank you very much, James. Um, has donated a pair of refurbished twin-leading shoe drums from an 88-inch. Uh, new drums, new cylinders, new shoes. He gave me hubs as well, but I've reused the existing hubs because I've already done the bearings on those. Um, so I've literally just bolted those on. Um, um, and the idea behind all this is every time I walk past this car, I bang my shin on that and I'm getting fed up with it. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to put the wheel back on. Then I'm not going to bang into it every five seconds flat. Now, the only thing I haven't got is the small bracket that bolts onto the back here that the flexi line goes down to and then there's a small rigid line that goes into the back of the top cylinder. So I need to get that sorted out. Um, I've more or less done the other side. Um, it's kind of ready for the wheel to go back onto. Um, I had to do a couple of little jobs. I think they've been sitting on the shelf for a while. So I had to take all of the shoe straightening bolts out so on the back of the drum there's a bolt here that's not for the adjusting the shoe in and out that's basically to adjust the shoe orientation so that it runs parallel and flat with the drum now in all of the cases they were a little bit on the tired side so let's go over here they normally look like that um and i got them all out by using grips and so forth. So I've replaced them all with uh, 5 16 inch UNF bolts. That's just an old bolt there. There's my single leading shoe brakes. So twin leading shoes, that's a single leading shoe. It's got two cylinders on a single cylinder. <coughs> and twin leading shoe will push forwards on that one. And then down here is another cylinder and it will push forwards on that one. So it gives you much more efficient brakes on the front of the vehicle, which is what we want. Right, so I'm going to crack on and put those on. You can see I've got damper dangling there as well. Um, I need to really jack the front axle up a little bit um, and then get the wheels on and the stands can come out. Don't need to be doing that while you're watching. That's one side done. Nice. Um, Grip part damper doesn't quite reach the... Uh, oh, it probably does now. Now I've got some weight on it. Um, I'll get the brip part damper on. <sighs> didn't reach before. The other problem I've got is this wheel didn't fit on this rim. And I started thinking, bollocks. Is there a difference between 11-inch and 10-inch rims? Now, what the fuck is that? Did anyone tell me? It's like a bloody great big balance weight. Let's put them on the inside of the rim. Anyone tell me? Never seen one like that before. Hulking great thing. Someone let me know. Goody good. And it's Land Rover Day. Right. Those dampers. There's something going on here because this damper is at its fullest extent. And it doesn't quite reach the bushes. So in order to get this thing to fit... I either need to compress the spring or extend the damper. Not good. Incorrect damper, I'm reckoning. Um, or incorrect, incorrect spec. Maybe the springs need to settle. I don't know. Um, however, uh, that damper clearly can't stay on there because in its kind of unsprung uh, situation, I appreciate that when you're going down a road, the springs will compress as you're driving along. And there's not a huge amount more weight to put on the front of this thing. I mean, the wings don't exactly, they're not, they're, they're, they don't weigh like the moon. Um, so, I can't imagine that these springs are going to compress much more than this. Um, however, those dampers being like that is useless. Because I think the first bump you go over, where the, where, 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 yeah, where the, the body is going to want to rise away, uh, the damper's just going to fly apart. Right, so that's the front end debacle then. I thought I'd ever go at the back end here. Um, the reason that exhaust is so close there is because some ham-fisted gibbons put the wrong fucking bracket on there. I mean, honestly. 
there are some spectacular twats out there, aren't there? Now, the other thing you'll notice, fuel tank's rusty. Might have to have a double check of that. The other thing you'll notice is look at the angle of those rear shackles. They are all over the place. Um, I've got a feeling that these springs on the back here, they are 11 leafers. I've got a feeling they've settled. They've both done exactly the same thing. I'm not sure that that should be at that angle. I think that should be more or less perpendicular. Dick, you know. Right, so my first thing here really is to get this up in the air and get a... Get a stand underneath it. If I get a stand underneath the chassis, then I can uh, drop the back end of the uh, spring down, um, uh, wheels off, dampers off, and get it out. Uh, and then I'll show you what it is I need to do with the back axle. Uh, I know this wheel nut's missing. This is the wheel that I couldn't fit on the front because it had that whacking great big weight, bob weight, on the inside, which I don't understand. It fits beautifully on a 10 inch, wouldn't fit on an 11 inch. So I'll just swap the wheels around. Right, radio on, I'll let you know how I get on. We're up in the air, <coughs> wheels are off. Um, there's a few of these, by the way, where when I ended them with a dugger dugger gun, and this is DCF 900, big bastard, um, it took the stud out. So, yeah. Um, more worryingly, though, um, is the, uh, th 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 there was a suggestion that the axle casing was in imminent um, <sighs> risk of snapping. Um, and you know what? They might have been fucking right. Uh, where, where can we go? We can go here. Look at this. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, yeah, so it looks very much like the axle casing has completely rotted through along this top edge here. I mean, look at the big lumps of rust that I'm able to knock off here. Um, I've got a feeling this is an X axle casing. I'll get it off, but I can't see that that is going to be a particularly easy repair. And if it's gone there, where else has it gone? I mean, look at all this shit up here. Some of this is shit, actually. It's shit from the Devon Plains. Um, that's not secure. That's obviously rotted off. Um, Yes, we could actually have an X axle casing. So let me get it off. I mean, all of the fixings here are, are, are past it. I'd, I'd replace, I wouldn't necessarily keep these U bolts. So, what I'll end up doing is I'll disconnect the shock absorbers. I will support the axle, um, axle stands. Um, I'll take the straps off because they look to be in good order. I'll cut the U bolts um, and disconnect the prop shaft. Uh, I can't see much more else I need to do. Um, I do have another axle. This is a Series 3 axle. I'm waiting patiently over here. Yes. Might end up using that. We'll see. That came off a short wheelbase, uh, 1982 Series 3. Um, but again. It's not without its issues, but I think the overall casing may be in far better order than my dad's. Now, what's... Just double-checking measurements and so forth. Yes, it is. I think what's happened here is the crash pad that goes on there has completely disappeared. It has disintegrated. And it's the bump stop for the bump. So it's possible, by welding a new bump stop on there, I can recover this, but I don't want this such that the end of the axle comes away uh, and the entire wheel comes off. I'd rather have a strong axle casing. There's quite a lot of load on the corners. And you can see that that is somewhat compromised. Right, okay, I'm going to crack on with this. The radio's going back on. Um, and let's see where we get to. There's a nice new loom up there. Well, nice new loom about 25 years ago. <laughs> right. We are onwards. Well, it's out. Tell you what, it's a heavy bastard. Um, right, I'm going to drag it out, uh, get the springs off, um, and start making it more manageable. Probably should have stripped the hubs down, really, beforehand. It would have made life a little bit easier, wouldn't it? Um, right, now... Yeah, I think that's... 
that's an X axle tube. You can see the drive shaft on the inside there. Uh, God knows how much oil is left in it. Probably none. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, let's just have a quick look, see how much backlash we've got on this. If I get on the floor down here, put the torch there. Right, are we ready? <sighs> yeah, Diff could do with some, uh, some light work, I think. And look at the... That's not brilliant, is it, really? Right. And all this mud that was falling off and attacking me. I don't think... No, because the bolts are going to be on the inside here, so I'm going to need to get the drums off. I was just trying to think outside the box whether I could just undo the hubs and take them off, like you can with the swivels on the front end of a Range Rover but evidently not. These back plates are looking a bit shot too. Um, right, let's get this apart. Oh dear. Oh, the other thing is, the top bolts on the shackles up there are absolutely seized in solid. Cannot move the fucking things. I've had Mr. Dugger Dugger going on them and he will not move. So I'm just going to spray with lube. Uh, worst case scenario is that those shackles stay on the car. Um, I suppose I could chop the threaded end off, reciprocating saw, and then bang the bolt out. But I don't want to be bending stuff, but it needs doing properly. These front bolts came out no problems at all. Um, so that's why the shackles are both hanging up there. Well, that is really, that's marvellous, eh? Right, now, let's see where we're going with this. X axle tube. That was hard work. Um, right, both of these springs are utterly fucked. You can tell they're fucked, I think, because the toy straps here have spread out. Um, they are all over the place. Um, I haven't ventured any further in getting the shackles off the back. I did give that a little tap. Uh, that's fucked. Um, and the shock absorbers are fucked, but the spring plates are good. Brake back plates are okay. Stub axles are okay. Drums are fucked. Apart from that, we're having a fucking lovely day. Um, so I need to find another axle tube, axle casing. Diff is knackered as well. Uh, there's no oil in it. Uh, it's obviously all splashed out. Um, I don't know when you last had this thing serviced, Dad. Um, but yes, I think. Um, so I, 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 like I say, I have got a Series 3 axle out here. Which is that bastard right there? That might end up getting used. Um, we'll see. I might strip that down um, and see where we are with it. It certainly looks in far better shape than this one. This one is an X axle. Right, I think on that basis now I am going to start clearing up because uh, it's a Saturday afternoon and the rugby's on. Yes, yes, yes. Right, let's get those dampers off those mounts and then keep the mounts. Dampers can go in the bin. Um, and yes. Here we have the differential out of that Series 3 axle that was outside my workshop. It's a doozy. Um, right, okay, absolutely nothing wrong with it as far as I can see. I'm not even going to bother taking it apart. I've taken it off the casing because I wanted to replace the gasket, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to lob it back onto <coughs> the casing before I pressure wash the casing off. Um, the majority of this is, is actually, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. The only thing it hasn't got is it hasn't got the reinforcing brace along here. <laughs> which I guess I could put on, but I don't think Dad's really going to be putting an enormous amount of mileage or weight onto his series Land Rover anymore. <clears throat> Even the diff pan on this thing is pretty good. You probably didn't want to tip that out into there, really, did you, Richard? I'll have to tip that out later on. Oh, well, that's polluted now anyway. Bollocks to it. Um, right. I'm not having a tinkle, by the way, folks. It's just... Oh, you dickhead. Anyway, um... You'll notice that the, the, the lower part of the spring with the mounting plate on it is in good order. There's a little bit of corrosion around where the uh, where the U-bolts go, but nothing like uh, what exists on the other one. Um, all looking really good. Even the top bump stop mounts are good, which is fantastic. Um, and then, um, right, here's my dad's old axle now. So 
I thought, well, do you know what? I'm going to get the diff out of it um, and probably just scrap the rest. Uh, the main reason being is I think this has been in the sea a few times, this axle, not under my dad's ownership. Um, but I don't know where the axle came from. As you can see, it is seriously compromised. I mean, not a little bit compromised. Seriously. Uh, there's not even the mounting on that side to support it steady on the top of the spring. So God knows how it did. Um, <clears throat> I knew that the back axle was a problem on this car um, about a decade ago, and I've done the square root of fuck all about it. And like I say, Dad gets this car serviced elsewhere. Um, otherwise, I might have noticed this, but just everything on this thing is fucked. An enormous amount of sand. I wonder if Devon wants its sand back. Um, so I don't know. I honestly don't know where the axle came from. It doesn't match in any way the condition of the front axle. The chassis was, by the way, in a similar state of dereliction um, before we swapped it over. And that was done a fair few years ago now. Uh, but it's not unusual to find a series axle um, that will collapse under its own weight when dropped from like four inches um, when, when, yeah, when they've reached the end of their life. Uh, yeah, so I think really this, this is for the scrap bin, this one gonna get the diff out of it because there might be something salvageable in the diff but there's a fair amount of lash in there and dad did say it was quite noisy <laughs> quite noisy <laughs> god help us right uh, when i was taking the series 3 diff apart all i really did was cut the nuts off the bolts on the inside edge of the rear axle flange for now um, and uh, that's left me then with the complete uh, hub stub axle drive shafts and so forth um, the brake back plates actually look way better than the ones that are on my dad's or come off my dad's car and I've got a new set of 10 inch drums anyway so I'm inclined to make up one good axle out of these two and that's certainly the diff that I'm going to use there was uh, very little backlash in that so I think I'm not even going to bother doing anything I'm just going to lob it straight in lob it straight in um, and uh, once it's in then I can pressure wash the axle casing off uh, uh, treat the rust on it um, and uh, yeah paint it drive shafts are out and very good they'll do the job um, that said, I mean they came out of a back axle from a Series 3 petrol Land Rover short wheelbase, so they're probably are fairly unstressed we've looked at that already, so I then started to pull these hubs apart um, there's one that is about to come apart nothing yet seized on them, the back plates are certainly usable but I'll have a look at those in a second then this is the right hand unit drive plate good hub good bearings good brakes seized solid so it looks like all i really need to do is replace the brakes give it a damn good clean up and put it together how about that this is the right hand rear back plate from my dad's car and you can see it's very much like the front back plates it is shagged properly shagged so the only thing that's really salvageable off that i think is going to be the uh the hockey stick i'm going to replace the wheel cylinders because i don't know how old they are i could end up resealing them i'll take them off and see what they look like but fixings on the back are heavily corroded so i suspect they are as old as the arc so then what i did was i looked at the new and this is the front right hand 10 inch back plate that i put together which is why it's still got the flexi on there the one that i've replaced for the 11 inch twin leading and it looks exactly the same so we compare the adjuster to the adjuster the, the orientation of the holes the overall shape of the thing and as far as i can see the back plate is the same left sorry front and back for right and for left just don't mix them up so this one's very clearly sorry that one i've not labeled up but i've taken it from the pile that came off the right hand side of the axle that one's been marked up as right hand 
This one here, which came off the Series 3 axle, has been marked as right hand. And again, we can see the adjusters are all on the same side. When we look at the other side, we can see that the layout of the springs is the same. The position of the hockey, sorry, hockey stick, the tennis racket is exactly the same. Um, so I'm comfortable that those two rears, right hand rears, are good. The problem I've got is that while I can use the back plate from the front, and the only reason I'm going to do that is because it's already painted. It's going to save me some time. If you look at the wheel cylinder, you'll notice that the exit position on the wheel cylinder is different. So I thought, ah, oh, I wonder. I wonder if they're different because they've got different part numbers. Yes, they are. So if we look at, I have got here this part, which is a wheel cylinder 243302G, G for OE quality, right hand rear. Take this out, okay, and I can extract one of the pistons from it, somewhat cack handedly because I've got my gloves on. Uh, let's take the glove off, be easier. Da, 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 da. Oh, there's a glove. Right, there's the cylinder, so I can take that off. There'll be a spring in here, so just be careful. That comes out. There we are, one piston. And here is the piston that I took out of my dad's back plate. So on this, I've already extracted one piston. And they are the same. If I then, that's the old one, that's the new one. If I then, because I'm going to pop that back together again, because I can go back on. If I then find the wheel cylinder this is a front wheel cylinder okay this one's from the front left hand so what we're now looking at is this bastard here and you can already see it is substantially fatter there's a substantial difference but if I take the piston out of one of the front single leading shoe cylinders you can see the piston is a world different. Let's put that up there. Where's that other piston gone? You dumb bitches. There. Back, front. There you go. Don't put the front cylinders on the back of your Land Rover. Not unless you like driving around in circles. So I'll have to label these up. These are, these are front single leading shoe cylinders. Um, and I've got the rears. So I'm going to go really i think with this there's not an awful lot i'm going to salvage off this i'll salvage the tennis racket the rest of it can go in the scrap i've got new shoes there's a lot of contamination around and about let's just treat it to a new set of everything um and uh yeah we're there right stop sniffing it's a, it's a pain in the ass i'll leave those absolutely intact they can go on the shelf as a right hand rear uh 10 inch drum and I can use those at some point in the future. I'll get to give them a quick clean off. Um, and then I can use this right hand front back plate, change the cylinder over for the right hand rear, put it back together again. Is that logical? I hope so. Pretty uh, straightforward exercise. Um, so I uh, undid the spring here, pulled the two shoes away from, replaced the cylinder. That's now right hand rear, right hand rear. You'll see that the exit point on each of those is exactly the same. I just bung the bung back in there. I took the bung out because I wanted to compress the shoes. Um, yeah, that'll do the job. That can go on the shelf. That can go on the axle. Right, the only thing I need off these original uh, wheel hubs, um, so these are the ones that came with the 2A, the only thing I need on a pair of them is the locking tab, <laughs> one dust gap, because uh, I just could not get the bastard off and I ended up going a bit biblical with it. Um, uh, seals, uh, 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 gaskets, and the stub axle seat um, that I need to get for those. That's pretty much it. Uh, they will then bolt up to those new back plates and also uh, that uh, Series 3 axle casing. Right, I'm going to go home and order some bits up, I think. <laughs>